Welcome back. So now that we know what id, ego, superego is, and these are what? The types. We have seen the traits. Now we are going to see stages of development. I've been telling you that your formation of your personality, the identity that you come up with, the roles that you take up, the behavior that you show, the morals that has been taught to you, these all depend on the stages of development. And if there is a deviation from any of these development, and the, the kind of exposure you get, the kind of nurture you get deviates from the normal course, you tend to become something which is not applicable to the society. Okay. Now, what are the stages of development? This is very interesting and again, I will um, not tell you the way psychological, uh, I mean psychologists are taught or children, students who take up psychology or MBA students are taught. I will try to make it simpler for you. You need to understand what were the stages of growth that you've gone through, what are the stages of growth that you will get to see. The first stage is the oral stage. and each in each of the stages your personality is built is being built okay inheritance whatever you've got it's fine but then each stage environmental nurturing is be, environmental factors and nurturing is being done and that is what form formulates or forms your personality oral state starts from zero to one and a half years okay so zero to one and a And here is mouth is the sensitive zone. Your mama must have told you, your papa must have told you, when you used to, uh, when you were small and one and a half years means by one year most children start walking. But when you used to crawl, okay, anything that you used to find on the floor you would put in your mouth. Because that is what you understand. You get all your attachment through your mouth. None of the other you start using your motor skills, that's your hands and legs, after a few, few days, a few months. But when you are born, when you are a newborn baby, you start, your mouth is everything. And you get attachment. And why am I saying this is, the first milk that you drink from your mama, that builds the attachment. And I have often seen my daughter and ask your mothers, they will tell you that when you are fed, okay, when your mama is feeding you, I have had often seen and that, that's such a beautiful sight, you know, when the child looks at the mother and smiles. Why does the child smile? All of you have done that, all of you. The child smiles because the child knows what is attachment. The child knows that this person feeds me, okay? She, that is why the child looks at the mother and smiles out of gratification, okay? So all that attachment that the child learns is through its mouth. Mouth is the sensitive zone and the main source of joy and pleasure. Why are these important? Why am I telling this to you? Because you've seen these stages. You know and most of the parents discuss these things with their children. They should discuss. You should go and ask. Mama, when you used to feed me, did I look at you and smile? Did I uh, have, did, I, uh, did you see pleasure in my, the moment you will drink your milk, you will sleep because you get pleasure. And this is what you know is attachment. Now think about the children who do not get this pleasure due to some reasons. Maybe the mother is no more or the child is abandoned. Maybe abandoned as in nobody takes care of the child. Will that child ever understand what is attachment? I have a pet at my home. Recently we have brought that pet. My uh, mother-in-law feeds her, feeds her as in she gives and she's a uh, baby, uh, girl dog, so she gives her food to her. The moment, uh, her name is Strawberry, the moment Strawberry is ha um, hungry, she will rush to my mother-in-law. Though my daughter makes her uh, call that she, she is my mama, so Strawberry, my mama is your mama. But Strawberry doesn't come to me for food. Strawberry goes to her grandmother for food. Why? Because she knows that this person is going to feed me. So when people, when children are abandoned, it's a pet. Pet know that they care, these are we, are we are the caretakers. When a child is abandoned and the child goes to a caretaker, now the child starts to find that attachment in that caretaker. If he or she gets that attachment, well and good. If he or she doesn't get that attachment, the early years of 
the formation of personality, right kind of behavior, right kind of, um, you know, uh, environment is not given to the child. And obviously, when your childhood is so bad, when you're growing years, when you're just born, if you do not get the proper exposure, nurture, your, for, your other growing years will be bad. Now, after the first six months, the sucking period, wherein we suck milk, the remaining one year is biting period. And ask your parents again, how many times must have you bitten your mama or papa? Okay, because that is when your teeth starts coming and you start biting things. Okay, that is the tearing. It's fairly difficult for the child and mother because of eruption of teeth and weaning. So, weaning off, you are, you are weaning off from the sucking period. If properly handled, infant's trust gets reinforced. So, the, in these years, in these months rather, now let's say there is a child who is being beaten, by whom I'm not going to discuss, but is being beaten. Every time the child wants to eat food, wants food, he or she gets a slap. Every time he or she is biting, gets a slap or is thrashed. What kind of environment is the child being brought up? Not all children get good environment, even from their own parents. Sad to say that and sad to see that. So that is where the child now knows, uh, does not understand what is the correct way. So he, he or she doesn't get the right kind of nurture. Infants trust gets reinforced when you shower your love, your care. That is why the child gets pleasure. And it develops an inbuilt and lifelong spring of optimism and hope. Now, the same child is beaten, thrashed. He or she will be always scared. He or she will always feel that life is so pessimistic. There's nothing that, come, that can come out of life. Un subconsciously, unconsciously, this is getting, getting built up for the child. Okay? You all are blessed that you've been given the, 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 care, the need of trust, the kind of trust and care you needed. And that is, that is how love, care, trust has been reinforced. So now you know that caring, trust and love is part of being human. Next stage is the anal stage. Half to third year. Till the time you are uh, in your mama's lap for your um, winning, uh, during the first few months and then you are crawling and then you start walking. That is when your mother and your father, the parents will try to train you on the use of toilet. So you are toilet trained, okay? That is why it's known as anal stage. Now, there are children who have been thrashed again or who have been ridiculed or uh, who we say that, look at this particular child. I mean, look at the kind of poop he has done. He, he keeps on uh, peeing he, or she keeps on peeing. I'm tired of cleaning this. Let's say the child gets these kind of, and often, when we become adults, when we grow up to become adults and there are some behavioral changes and we do not do things which a society accepts, there is always a history to it. These kind of people who are into some criminal activity or are antisocial must have had such primitive growth stages. Okay? So, when, when the child is in the anal stage, the child no more depends upon the mouth zone for pleasure. When you are a child, small baby, you do not even know when you are peeing and pooping. Okay, somebody comes and cleans you up, you get your instant gratification. And all that you know is attachment comes through mouth. But now that you've grown a bit, the mouth zone is gone. He now derives pleasure from bowel and bladder. And a child gets irritated when he, his bowel is not uh, clear. You must be thinking, what am I discussing here? I'm discussing all these things because these have formed your personality. And it's very important for you to know this. Uh, functioning which entails anxiety because of toilet training by parents. Child is taught where to pass urine and where to go for defecation, etc. So you are taught now, you cannot pass urine or stool when you are in the room. Your mama teaches you that this is how you should sit, this is the potty uh, seat that you have. And if at that point in time you are not being taken care of, you're not being cared for, you're, not, you're being thrashed, your formative years do not uh, give the kind of love and trust you should get and that affects your personality. In this training of bladder and bowel control, child may develop autonomy. Okay, that is how you get autonomy or shame and doubt. So if, you, if your parents teach you, have kind of uh, taught you that this is how you should go, this is not where you should be passing your urine or stool, you should go. They're training you with love and care, 
But just imagine somebody who is not being trained with love and care and being ridiculed, shouted at, thrashed at, develops shame and doubt. But this, ch this child who is given a lot of love and care and is being taught how to do it correctly, develops autonomy. It might sound very funny, but your bowel movements kind of makes you relieved of certain tensions. Okay? That is why you get autonomy. I can do it on my own. The autonomy that you get. That is the anal stage. The next stage is the genital stage. Third to six years of life. That is where you understand your body. The task for this period is to develop and strengthen initiative, failing which the child develops a strong feeling of guilt. Uh, this is how you should walk, this is how you should hold things, your motor skills, your body, all these things you come to know about. He or she is now capable of initiating activity. You walk, you run, you hold ball, you throw ball, okay? Both intellectual as well as motor on his own. So now you know, okay, you, you start solving puzzles, you start holding things and throwing, you start running, all right? And when you are given, again, you are given a cohesive and conducive environment, you feel so confident. And just imagine the child who is not given, who is thrashed literally, ridiculed, uh, beaten up during this uh, stage of uh, genital, he or she doesn't understand his or her body and that's so sad. So You know initiating activity, intellectual as well as motor, how far this initiative is reinforced depends upon how much physical freedom is given to the child and how far his cu curiosity is satisfied. You must be seeing your parents, they would be bringing so many toys for you, they would want you to play, they would want you to develop your motor skills, your, your intellect. But then there are children who do not get this opportunity. These children are carried on the, the shoulders or in the hands and then you see these beggars who carry the children. What kind of growth will this child have? He is not physically being asked to use his abilities or mentally being asked to use his abilities. All he knows that during these years of mine, maybe I need to beg. Or that is the kind of personality he starts developing. Okay? That is why I'm, I'm training you all on this so you understand that the reason why I am what I am today is because of the love, care and affection and support that I've got from my parents. And I need to pass it on to the next generation. If he or, he, he or she is led to feel bad about his behavior as, or his interests, let's say we say that a girl is playing with a car and then we come and say, you are playing with cars, you are a girl. Play with Barbie or play with dolls. Now the girl now knows that, okay, this is something which is female, this is something which is male. Um, a female is not supposed to play with uh, Cars, uh, a lady is only meant to be cooking at home. That is the kind of, you know, behavior, insight she gets into her mind. And that is, that is why she, when she'll grow up, she'll get married. All she will expect is from her to do is that I will go and clean the house. I do not have any other role to play. So when the child is led to feel bad about his or her behavior or, or his interests, he or she may grow with a sense of guilt about his or her self-initiated activity. So as parents, we should never do that and we never do that. But then there are children who, who go through these kind of pains. Then comes the latency stage, 6 to 11 years. Most of you are in that stage. The child can reason out rationally and can use the tools that adults use. Now you know. You must be in coding. You must be doing crafts. You must be in doing skating, cycling. Now you, you know what is right, what is wrong, how you should be behaving. You have already decided maybe what you want to become. That is the latency stage. You are kind of whatever the, an adult does, you can do it. You may be having some immaturity because of the age, but you are capable of doing things that adults do. You can reason out, you can uh, use logic, you, you cannot be made a fool, okay? If your parents say this is, this is not done the way, you, you will counter them, you will say, I know the right way because I have, I have known this, I know that I have the knowledge. You cannot fool a child of at least today's years, even a six-year-old child, he or she knows so much, you cannot fool them. Then, adolescence, 12 to 13. Just be before you hit your teens, 13 is just enter teens, but 12 to 13 is kind of, we say that you're adolesc adolescent. The adolescence during this transitional uh, process, from childhood to maturity, now you are becoming a, you are becoming mature, adolescent, okay? There are a lot of changes that happen in the body, lot of changes. 
people who have attained this age, children who have attained this age will know it. Children who are yet to attain this change, you will feel it when you reach that stage. Behave something like an adult and sometimes like a child. There is a, there is a poem, am I a child or an adult? So there's always a tussle. No, I'm an adult. No, I'm still a child. So there's always a tussle that happens in your mind. Parents too show their ambivalence to accept them in their new role for an adult in the making. So even parents are confused. Is my child, has my child grown up or still a child? And lots and lots of body changes happen. Lots and lots of hormonal changes happen. And that also affects your behavior. Okay. Now during this adolescent stage, um, it's, it's for us to, for, for people who care for the child has to identify what is it that we should do for the child. The task of this age is to develop identity. You've already developed, I mean, this is where you develop identity, values, beliefs, skills, various roles, limitations, etc. Failing which his identity gets diffused and he or she fails to know how to behave in different situations. If this is when you do not get that support, that nurture, you will not know how to behave and then you will start throwing tantrums or you will be so shy, so quiet, you will not know what to talk, what to say. So either you become very, very irrational or you become very meek, very shy, you do not know what to do with your life if proper care and nurture is not given. She, he or she needs to be helped to deal with the physiological, emotional pressures along with pressures from parents, peers, etc. So this is the time wherein proper love and care should be given because you are attaining adulthood. You are at the age of attaining adulthood in few years. You have already become an adolescent. There will be a lot of changes in your body, hormonal changes, physical changes. You should know your body. And if a child is not told how the body works, how the body behaves, how society behaves, what are the values, beliefs, and the, the behavior that you need to show, you tend to become maybe something, or your personality becomes uh, something that is not acceptable in the society. Okay, So for us to need to know these types, not, I would not say, very uh, necessary, I mean the developmental stage, not very necessary, but at least a glimpse of it can help you in understanding what has happened to you, why you are, uh, whatever traits you have, why, how come you have developed that and be thankful about the good traits and all the traits that you have. And in the formative, in the, f in the subsequent years, because you are still, you are yet to grow, what is it that you need to do? Okay. So be thankful to your parents and your surroundings, your peers, your school, your class teachers, your teachers, your friends who have taught you, who have helped you in becoming what you are today. And with that hope, I believe that whatever traits have been taught to you, whatever you've acquired, sorry, the traits that you've acquired and tra the traits that you've inherited will make you in becoming a great, great person. Thanks for watching.